Hey there, friends. I'm never excited when I bring you these types of videos because it shows the true level of corruption and bullying and power and control that various bureaucracies uh, within the United States tend to abuse. And uh, obviously they do it wielding that power with the power of intimidation and trying to make people feel like they have no recourse because the ATF always has the last word. I was lucky enough to speak to Dave of Black Metal Firearms on a phone call about this video that many of you have probably seen where an ATF agent is taking picture after picture after picture of hard copy records of Black Metal Firearms. And what she's doing in one of these particular videos is taking the acquisition and disposition book that shows where the the company black metal purchased the firearm from who it got sold to and all the vital information in between especially regarding the firearm itself and the person who it went to this lady is taking picture after picture after picture of the entire book not ones that she thought that there was an issue with of the entire book and she's doing this with a tracing software that allows her to read the entire page, edit out things that the picture or the program or the app doesn't want, and just produce an electronic version of that page with all the relevant data on it. So anyway, I had a chance to talk to Dave, and this is some explanation of what we talked about and what happened. We completed our move first week of November, and I wanna say mid-December, our ATF agent walks in, flashes the badge, and says, I'm here to do your compliance inspection. And I said, okay. Um, now, I've had compliance inspections before. My wife hadn't. And my wife looks at her and he goes, um, can we just make an appointment? You know, because we, we bring our kids to the shop every single day. You know, we have a little playroom for them. And it's one of those like, hey, you know, we're, we're in the middle of opening our shop. Can we just make an appointment with you? Mm-hmm. And the ATF agent looks at my wife and goes, I can take your license right now if you prefer. <laughs> Gosh. And I said, yeah, the, you, you have to do the thing now. So she goes, yep, I want your books right now. So we go and we grab the paper books and she goes, you don't have a computer? I said, no, we do it all paper. She's like, why are you still doing paper? And, well, I told her straight to her face because I don't trust the government to not abuse the digital system. She really did not like that. I'm sure. Um, <laughs> she she actually made a point to you know say like you know my my arrogant anti-government beliefs and you know my quips about not trusting the government. I'm like I was in the army for ten years. I have every reason to not trust the government. Right. <laughs> um, now this was the know, same but, This was the same lady in that video clip that you showed. Correct. Okay. What are the reasons for the uh, requested revocation? I mean, what, did they give you reasons of what they may or yeah, may not so, have found? So at the closeout of the uh, of the audit, I mean, like I said, there were plenty of clerical errors. Um, you know, some of them were pretty weird clerical errors. Ones that even I have in writing that says that it's uh, supposed to be this way and not that way. We had customers that would mark, uh, you know, like a few people wrote USA instead of their county, you know, because they, they saw county but red country, so they write USA, and you know, right. didn't catch that. Um, we had some people that would, uh, you know, like mark their birthday or something like that, or, you know, whatever, small stuff like that. But in, in the pile, there were two customers that had given us their concealed weapons permits that had expired that same month. So, I mean, we're talking like within a few days and, you know, so of course it was like, okay, we gave out a firearm without a background check because their permit had expired. Hmm. Here's the thing. Both of those customers were able to produce for us their concealed weapons permit, the renewed one, and the active date was in the period of the background check or of the 4473, the transfer. So both of them had active permits at the time. This is verifiable on the state records. She said, nope, doesn't count, marked it wrong. We noticed that they were going through the box and going page by page, taking pictures. And again, this is in full view of our customers. So my wife went over and talked to her and said, hey, um, some of our customers are concerned uh, that you're taking pictures of all their personal data. And she goes, well, that sounds weird. It sounds like they're just being paranoid. Um, you know, and 
So, okay. Well, as she's getting ready to leave for the day, and she's like, oh, you know, I have a few customers that I think are interesting, you know, because they this person buys a lot of guns here and you have a few gun nuts. And I said, I prefer gun enthusiasts. And she says, no, they're gun nuts. Hmm. Uh, like I'll, I'll never forget that particular interaction because wow. I, I thought it was rather presumptuous and rude, but she just said, yeah, it's, it's, um, yeah, they're gun nuts. Unreal. I don't know exactly what her thought process was, but I think her goal was to show me that, you know, we can do this digitally pretty easily. Uh, if we wanted to make the transition so that we, we could archive all of our stuff. And she showed me this app on her phone. For the life of me, I couldn't tell you what it is. It's one of those regular open source apps that's floating around on the app stores. But it, um, if you were to take a picture of a document, it will automatically crop out the document, like if you're not completely straight, and it will auto-correct to make the document straight. And, of course, that makes the text readable. And she was showing me this was the app she was using to copy up all the stuff. And when we asked her, like, you know, because she made a point, you know, she, we saw that she had her government phone. It was a iPhone and a black otter box. And then she had her other phone with her. That was her personal phone, her personal iPhone. And when we first started doing some, uh, the walkthroughs of our inventory, we saw her take out both phones and take pictures of things and said, two phones? She goes, yeah, you always want to double up just in case something happens to the first one. And I was like, why would you use your personal phone for this? Um, you know, and as you saw later on, or I guess you saw in the video, the phone that she's using is kind of like a white and pink case looking phone. That's her personal phone, her black government phone's on the table to her left. Mm. Um, you know, and that that kind of presented a lot of other questions because we have a lot of data in those books. I mean, aside from, you know, who bought their gun, I mean, you're talking about person's PII with social security numbers and things like that and addresses, uh, you know, and that's on a personal device, which is not secure. Right. Well, friends, that's it for now. Um, I will let you know as I find any more information out about uh, Dave and Black Metal Firearms. I'll tell you what I'm going to do to try to help him out is uh, I'm going to go look at his website and see if I can't find something uh, for my own collection because uh, it looks like he's going to need it. You know, it's sad because in instances like this, the ATF and these government organizations are are flexing. They know the kind of power and control that they have. They know that just like this woman um, has basically said whenever uh, Dave's wife said, well, can you know we make an appointment? She said, well, I can just take your license from you now. It's that cocky, arrogant air with these a-holes. And they know that, who, who are you going to go to? You know, I would recommend them contact congresspersons, um, senators. Hopefully this video gets out there if you guys share it to enough people. Uh, maybe the word gets out and somebody that has any kind of influence over this horrible bureaucracy at the ATF can do something to this crazy little woman and uh, the ATF. I wish the best for Dave right now. Uh, it's tough for he and his family and his kids. He's got three kids, all very young kids. Um, it's a shame that his livelihood is sitting in the balance right now. He mentioned to me that there's another company that um, did get their license, their FFL license revoked. And their investigation or their audit was as much as a year ahead uh, prior to that, before they were actually notified that they are basically getting run out of business. So she's already made the revocation request for Dave and his business a few months ago, and he just doesn't know. He's in, basically in limbo right now. He's just sitting back there wondering if his business is going to get shut down or if it's going to be left open. And uh, that's unfair. That's not right. But again, government overreach. It's government overreach, it's uh, government bullying, it's sanctioned by the government, and it's pathetic to see. And uh, this is your tax dollars hard at work.